All right, all right, all right. Good evening. It's a three-man weave here. You all know what time it is. It's that time that you get excited for every single week. Welcome in. It is SEC After Dark. Like I said, uh, there is no Jeb Beecham tonight, so it is a three-man weave between uh, myself, Corey Burton, Jake Thomas, and Stephen Willis. Jake Thomas of Tide Talk Live. Stephen Willis locked on Ole Miss. Uh, back here to bring you some magic here on SEC After Dark. Uh, you can find me at Locked on Vandy. And and uh, believe in Georgia dogs as well. Uh, got it back crazy to think that's opposite ends of the spectrum, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just what I do. I, I book in the SEC and I'll let everybody else deal with the middle. So Corey, yeah, Corey's running that no middle defense. Yeah, I'm 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 the I'm the extreme man. I'm, I'm extreme. I go from the worst. I go from the best to the worst. Sometimes in one night, it's kind of hard to flip your mind around. To be honest with you. I did. It was funny. Like I did a I did a show about Mark Byington being. Well, actually, no. I did a Georgia show on Monday night. I did it live um, for it, so it to go live on Tuesday, and uh, so one of my best shows of like this the last like six weeks is uh, was the show that actually four in four hours into it being published was not factually correct. Oh it god! Got, it got almost four hundred views. <laughs> Yeah, that, that factually, happens. Yeah. Yeah. It was not factually correct because, because Vandy actually made a hire. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was talking, I was it was some speculation stuff on, on a couple of candidates that, that I thought some of the insiders were were had had beat on, and uh one of the guys just chose to go out west to Washington. But um yeah, thought I had a beat on that, had a really good show, and then all of a sudden, four hours into it, I'm like, I'm getting ready to like do some social media posts, and I look up and I'm like well, dang, made a hire. All right, but we are presented Congrats. by Dead Toxy. We are, de- and apparently Copenhagen. Yeah, uh, we're, no, well, we're presented by Dead Soxy. If you want to support Old Miss NIL, uh, go to deadsoxy.com, Buy you some socks. You can get some that look just as awesome as that. Um, you can get the Quinchon Judkins pair. They're probably on clearance. Yeah, um, seriously. If you're a Buckeyes fan, you can get them. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can reminisce about uh, get some throwbacks so um 25 discount and free shipping if you sign up for the membership uh it's a good deal so make sure you do that as well and uh we're not picking any lines tonight but if we do uh betonline.ag is the uh number one source for all your sports wagering needs if you want to bet it they have it there at betonline.ag they even have an online casino if you're into that uh so what you need to do now is go to betonline.ag uh, and enter the promo code <laughs> belief that's B L E A V to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Betonline.ag, it's where the game starts. Steve, uh, we're out there rolling start here. We yeah. go, baby. <laughs> Auburn coming in hot. Um, all right, man. There that's you go. That's pretty cool right there. They want to walk to Nolan sign football. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's cool. That's pretty awesome, Nathan. Mm-hmm. Nathan, if you if you uh, if you really want to consider yourself uh, lucky and fortunate, you can get. I'll, I'll sign a football for you too. Well, what that would be worth, but but it'll and, just have an X on it, Corey. I'll, I'll sign it. And uh, before we get rolling in into the show, I was just going to say, uh, as of right now. My plans are to be at the Alabama A Day game. So the next episode, you know, when that is, I'll probably have some insight on the team this year. Ooh. So, oh, so that Tide Talk. Are you going to do like a Tide Talk live Instagram while you're sitting in the stands? I don't know. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'm trying to see if Stacy wants to go too. But as of right now, me and Cassie are going to go. Is the A Day game like, is that shirt optional there? I don't uh, know. I'm, I'm keeping mine on though. Uh, I get a tan, dude. You know, work on your tents first. Uh, Probably uh, the first nice day in a while, man. It's been like uh, nobody wants to see see this gut in public. No, nah, well, first, fly, first night's day. First night's day in a while down here. <laughs> I have six of those a week. You're right. <laughs> yeah, up here in Nashville, uh, Mother Nature can't make up her mind. It's winter in the morning, spring in the mor- spring in yeah. the late morning, summer in the uh, in like the mid afternoon, and then fall in the. And then back to winter. It's like oh, we yeah. get all four seasons in one day. It's like I get frost on my car when I get one outside today. Mm-hmm. Well, what the hell? Well, well, what Florida is, if anybody's been down here, 
in early morning, it's spring in the day, it's summer. And at nighttime, it's fall every yeah. day. Yep. Yeah. I can attest to that. It's, it's uh, nice. And, and when you get summer during the summer part of the day, and then you walk into the fall part of the night, it's really chilly. By the you're going in and out, Corey. Yeah, right, Corey. Am I, am I okay? Crap. Yeah, yeah. You you need to um close some apps, bud. <laughs> Don't turn into Jeb now, Corey. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you... Good lord, hold on. Yeah, right, closing some closing some apps here. Hold on. All right, I'll do this real quick. It's time to get locked right. on pickles, everybody. Stewart's Cajun mm -hmm. Pickles, that is. They offer a variety of Cajun spice products like pickles, green beans okra, even carrots, and asparagus. This is a family-owned company, homemade on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles have been pleasing pickle lovers for over 20 years now, and they've become the South's favorite pickle. This is a small business, and they try to keep the produce fresh and local from the start, and they keep that final pickle product extra crisp and crunchy. Try these pickles, okra, or beans today. You will not be disappointed. Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles, the South's favorite pickle. Make sure you refrigerate. Yes, yep. Corey. <laughs> Make sure, yeah. Please refrigerate. Yeah, that'd be that'd be good. Is my microphone coming in any better? Yep. We we good. Yeah. yeah. Microsoft is deciding to uh, do an auto update right now. Oh gosh. Um, you know how that goes, right? It's fun. It's always Hold fun. On. I don't have Windows ninety five. <laughs> it's Windows ME, Steve. Okay, I upgraded. <laughs> That's what I'm upgrading to. Okay. <laughs> happy i found lycos okay jeez Corey got a question for you in the chat oh Corey, well uh, when are y'all starting spring practice it's already started both the teams i cover have already started um georgia is like a couple weeks in like two three weeks in they're they're getting ready uh a, uh the g day is in uh, a couple weeks yep april 13th same time same time alabama's is the same day same day Mm -hmm. We're on ESPN, ESPN, I think, I believe. Mm -hmm. The Ocho? The Ocho. Uh, Vandy's not having a spring game. They're doing a couple scrimmages because, like, the stadium is – it's a nightmare to get to the stadium, and they want to kind of mitigate that. It's a lot lot to do for a small event. So, there well, you that's go. All, that's all Vandy fans have is a small event. Are there football games? Well, they don't. They don't. Well, they rely on the other team to fill right. up the state. So, you know how that, so it, it, that yeah. visit that visiting side of the Vandy Stadium. Whenever like Ole Miss or Georgia is there, it's just like bright Wait. red. The whole Wait, stadium. Is the visiting side. <laughs> how about the whole bowl? Yeah, but the entire bowl. When George, yeah. no, it's no. Seriously, when Georgia comes to Vandy, it like some teams get like half the stadium. Some teams like that like five sections are full of their with Georgia. The whole dang thing is like red. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes to the Georgia game. If you're a Vandy fan, cause I know they ain't got a shot. You know what's going to happen mm -hmm. except for in 2013 when they lost. No, that's been centuries ago. I know it feels like so the, long ago. 2013 was James Franklin and mm -hmm. that man earns all the money that he gets at Penn State because he won nine games back-to-back -back years at Vandy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is right next to turning water into wine, walking on water, all of that stuff. <laughs> yes. J J James Franklin did that, mm -hmm. and he dropped the mic and left. Yeah. And then went to Penn State and was like, ha-ha. That's what he did. Yeah, his number one defense in the country got absolutely steamrolled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time. Well, well done. Mm -hmm. Well done. You know, close these let's notes. go ahead and get started. Um, yesterday, <laughs> well, not yet. Yeah, yesterday, Lane Kiffin had a press conference. He met the press um because Ole Miss is in spring practice. And one of the questions that came up, they asked him about helmet technology for the offense and speaking to the quarterback. And Lane Kiffin talked about how defensive coordinators – they think they're all cute and everything, and they want this to happen. But Lane Kiffin described this as a cheat code for the offense, Madden style, and I think that should scare the hell out of everybody if he's doing that. This is a guy that's known for whistling at people when he knows the big play is going to happen and throwing his hands up in the air like that. Can you imagine now that every play up until the time they snap, Lane Kiffin's going to say, hey, 
throw it to three, throw it to number nine. Whoever in the progression that he wants to hit, he can just tell the quarterback for they because they're going to be able to recognize the coverage. You're not going to be able to disguise it, and he's just going to be able to pick you apart. Yeah, even if they cut it off, man, even if they cut it off at a certain time, like the NFL does, he's still like the way he goes, the way he does tempo, like they're still going to be set and he's still going to have an idea. He's going to be like, all right, I, he's no, hold on. Even if they stop it at 15 seconds, he's going to be like, Hey, uh, three's open. Uh, make sure you uh, make sure you hit him. He's going to be on the post. Uh, and uh, here we go. Let's go. Uh, Razor, Bear Claw, um, Steve, Sally, Jet, Devery on the post. Alert to Zebra, Tiger, Bear. Now, how long that is not your yeah, playbook? Right. Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. Not. <laughs> it takes 25 seconds to get the call in. Yeah, no, I mean, you y- y'all ever see those videos with the NFL calls? It's hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the NFL calls are like, what, what's the John Gruden play that he loves? Spider two Y banana. That's like the shortest one he calls. Yeah, yeah. All the West Coast offense stuff is like a paragraph. Yeah. Can you imagine like getting that in your headset? There's seventy five thousand people screaming at you, and you're like. Okay, shift to shift to west right tight zipper f f look z z post y looky. <laughs> oh, okay, Corey. Okay, we got to do this real quick. Okay, your favorite play. Give us your terminology and your verbiage. Call your favorite play. Call my favorite play. Okay, here we mm-hmm. go. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Trips right. Seattle Cobb. Trips right, Seattle cop. Okay. Okay. That's that is that is uh trips right with a wing. Seattle sprint out. Actually be yeah, Seattle sprint out, and then Cobb is our con is our comeback concept. Okay. So we're okay. sprinting, sprinting out to the and we're always sprinting to the strength of the Seattle means we're sprinting to the strength. Oh, so that's 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 your code word for strong. No, the formation gives me the strength. Oh. Um, that's my code word for sprint protection. Okay. That's the protection. All right. Pretty fired up. Um, Casty, happy Easter. Hope everything's going well for the mother. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, mama. First mm-hmm. Easter as a mama. And, and baby. All good. Yeah. Good. Yep. And Growing. Tired. And we got Pop, we got Papa Thomas here. Are you yeah. are you delirious yet? No, I, I have been since we brought her home. <laughs> you have been or have not been? Yeah, I have been. Yeah, okay, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> it's just yeah. just just uh, uh, never stopping, right? I, I just get sleep when I can. You know, driving to work, I get to sleep. Uh, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't sleep when I'm <laughs> to work, but <laughs> yeah, I sleep on the interstate. <laughs> I wake I wake up because I run into the little parking thing. And just, you know, oh gosh, hang on. No, there, there's been times where I'm like driving and I, I'm like awake, but I'm asleep. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? That's, that feels safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure how I made it. To, I'm not sure how I'm still sitting here, to be honest with you, on the, in those in those moments. Like one time I woke up and I was going like, one time I kind of snapped too and I was going 110 miles an hour. I was like, you better slow down. Good gosh. God, Corey. Yeah, y'all y'all are doing that. Like me and Jeb this Friday, we're going doing a little blow off their blow off steam episode. Uh, um, Jeb yeah, did an going, episode. No, no, no. We're going to Tampa. Ah, uh, there you uh, go. And oh, just okay. so everybody knows, Tampa okay. is the capital of daddy issues yeah. east of the Mississippi. Uh, uh, Steve's uh, about to do it. it. You're it's research, right? Huh. No, it's <laughs> not research. <laughs> no. I'm not researching anything. <laughs> I'm being a good brother-in-law. Jeb's going to do research, though. <laughs> Jeb's going to be researching his ass off. <laughs> yes, he's going to be the best damn researcher ever. Um, it, Bobby, go to thepickledstore.com, thepickledstore.com, and you can search them there. Mm-hmm. They are really, really good. Just refrigerate them after you open them. Don't be like Corey. <laughs> yeah, don't be like me. Um, yeah. Be like the dude in your avatar there. The great, the legendary Bobby Cox. Look how he spelled his last name, though. 
<laughs> he did spell his last name like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. he went there. It's I like okay, that. Though. I'm we're going to we're going to we're going to do some MLB after dark here in a little bit, but we're not going to uh-huh. do the first half hour of it. No. No. So, um Helmet Tech is an offensive cheat code. Dude, I I mean, I absolutely love this dude. Like I, I really do. Getting back on the you know, sorry to get off on the tangent of like covering the mouth and like um but yeah, it, it's absolutely it, it's absolutely necessary. Um, you know, especially for the team like especially for the teams that can afford it. Like I think when you play your FCS game I don't know how you do that because, like, I don't know that Austin P can afford helmet technology unless somebody's going to provide that for them. But, well, I, I, they're getting a paycheck anyway. I don't care if they can use it or not. And in fact, if they only um used it for the one game, they're probably not going to get the benefit of it anyway. Um, they're getting their paycheck. They're it's, this is called a rent a win for a reason. Yeah. Um, so it's not a situation where if you use helmet te- technology, you should be allowed to use it the whole time. If you can't afford to, and you don't use it and you come there to where you don't have it, the other team's not going to get punished. They, they, at least they should. Yeah. I don't I mean, think that, I don't think FBS schools should be playing FCS opponents during the regular season. Anyway, I think that should be a spring game. I, yeah. I would like to see that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. That would be a good fundraiser there, but, um, yeah, so it's going to be, you know, it, it's long overdue. Uh, I think you get rid of some of this sign stealing garbage, even mm-hmm. though sign stealing during the game. Let me preface by saying during the game is gamesmanship. Breaking your budget and sending somebody to different venues is cheating. Cheating. Yeah. cheating period. That's cheating. straight cheating. It, yeah. There's no way to get around that. That's cheating. straight up cheating, right? If you do it mm-hmm. during the game, it's part of the game. Right. That just means they have weak signals. Yeah, it just means like, <laughs> yeah. something better. Um, yeah. Uh, how, how long are they going to get? You know, is it 10 seconds before the, the play clock ends? When it's I, think, I, th- I think it's 15 seconds. 15. Okay. Before. The NFL, it's 15. It cuts off at yeah. 15. Because, yeah. I mean, most but, teams nowadays run like the hurry up. They get set to the line before the ball even gets there, so they got plenty of time to – Ole Miss, Ole Miss, the average is snapping the ball at about 21 seconds. Right. Which means if you just slow it down to 18, Lane Kiffin gets to look over everything. The headset is going with people in the press box looking at the coverages going on. And if they see a look that they want to look, instead of 10% plays or Lane Kiffin shot plays, might be 15 or 20%. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's – yeah, I mean, this is a serious advantage for Lane Kiffin. But I also think the defense is going to help them because you always hear like um, Nick Saban and Kirby Smart. The most important thing when playing a tempo team is to get lined up and get your boots in the dirt. You hear that all the time, get your boots in the dirt. This is going to help them at least do that. But you're still not going to be able to get overly complex with your calls. Yeah. You you never will against tempo. That's like the the number one thing, number one reason why people do that. Mm. Because if you're even – even the advantage teams do it and, and it gives them a, a major advantage. But like, that's why a lot of these disadvantaged teams do that kind of thing. Like if, if you know you're in a talent deficiency versus a, versus a defense versus certain defense, like hell it's perfect. Cause you can just wear them out. Yeah. So pretty fired up. Oh, did y'all hear um, what Prince Lee mommy Ellen said? He said that, um, Basically, Florida was just like, "Yeah, we're not going to coach you. Just go do your thing." Yeah, and, he's, and he that. talked about yeah, he talked about um how because Lou Spano, by the way, a lot of middle school stuff. Lou Spano is at Ole Miss, who was a former UConn coach, former UCLA defensive coordinator. Is he's like the lead analyst, but Pete Golding's there also, and other players as well. And they said Prince Lee and Mom Mill, and he's getting coached hard for the first time in his career. And he said at Florida, they just tell him to drop into that zone and figure it out. That's wild. Or, or um, use your athletic gifts, but it wasn't really coaching technique or things like that. Yeah, it was kind of like they were just making sure that they pumped him up and just said, go do your thing. Yeah. And, and, and Pete Golding is from the – at this point, you can say the Nick Saban school – to where at, at Alabama, they made a living coaching their better players the hardest. 
And well, the better players want to be coached like that. You know, yeah. like those those elite guys want that, and when they don't get it, they you know they're like, "Whoa, what the hell?" Like that's probably why like, Caleb Downs is leaving Ohio State because they're a bunch of you know frauds over there. Um, and then staff. Is that is that true? I mean, is that is he in the transfer portal? Is that? In- I don't think is, is it true. Is it true? Is, 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 is it true? No, I mean, I I I haven't. Bro. I saw those rumors <laughs> and all that, but I don't think it's going to come back to Alabama. Uh, there's way. rumors at Ole Miss about Tyler Barron for this right. spring. Yeah, and it's going to be and, it's going to be crazy. I don't think the portal is yeah. open, so I don't think he can get in the portal yet. Right. Not not until April fifteenth. Yeah, and so. Um, you know, like Proctor, like I'm sure he went to Iowa and was like, what the hell is this? And he's like, nope, <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> that was such a weird thing with Proctor, though. By the way, Michael, on this one right there, I don't think you have to worry about Kiffin to Florida. No. The, ru- the thing that I've heard is the board of trustees are not Lane Kiffin fans. And those are the people that are going to have to sign off on anybody that is recruited to be a coach. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Miami? I would worry about Miami if that ever comes open. It might this year. I don't know. It depends on what Cristobal does. Cristobal is such a mid coach. Yeah. He's like the definition of mid. (laughs) Yeah. Like what? Like just, he doesn't excel at anything. No. He's just decent. Not even clock management. Oh my God. God, He's terrible at that. That brings his average down. Yeah. Kneel on the ball. Yeah. Good just God, kneel, man. Just kneel on it. Just take a, a snap and just fall. That, down. that decision got Georgia Tech a bowl game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It did. Mm-hmm. He, he must have went to the school of Les Miles clock management, you know. Oh, man. Les Miles <laughs> clock management was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, my gosh. How many so games what, did they lose because of his clock management? At least four. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, the question, what we were talking about, about Princely and Mommy Ellen, um, is, is you think that is the reason that Florida is in the bad position they are? They're just cut corners. Cut corners. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, obviously, they don't know what – like, they don't have an identity, and it just seems like what, what – what, um, what's his name? Go ahead and say it. Princely, Oman, Yellen. Oman, Oman, Ellen. Uman Mielin. Princely Oman Mielin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Based on his comments, I, it, it just sounds like they're just trying to figure out what they want to do. And they're just like, uh, okay, you're a super athlete. Uh, just, just, just go there. You know, it, it, I mean, it feels like they had no plan. It feels like they're scrambling. It just feels like they just don't know what to do with the talent. Like they're in there. It just sounds like they're in over their heads. Yeah, and you'll Honestly. never have a talent problem at the University of Florida. That's the crazy thing. Right. Because you can just go on I-4 between Orlando and Tampa and have a recruiting class that would be in the top 15 in the country. hmm Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Especially from Lakeland. Oh, yeah. The Lakeland Dreadnoughts, there's two five-stars on the field at all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And you don't know what to do with that talent. Dude, hire me. I'm like way cheaper. Mm-hmm. Like you yeah. could hire me for, you could hire me to be the head coach for like a million dollars, and I'll go down and and, and out and out duel that. I mean, it's, wasn't it? Wasn't that uh, Austin Armstrong's like first year as as defense coordinator? I think he might have been a little bit over his head, especially at Florida. Like, well, he absolutely yeah. was in over yeah. his head because they got um, what's his face from Auburn. To come down yeah. to be the associate head of the head coach of the defense, or whatever they're calling it, yeah, the game changer coach. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's spending all this time. It's like Jeff. I mean, this is Jeff Collins all over again. Mm-hmm. This is Jeff Collins at Georgia Tech mm-hmm. all over again. He's worried about like goofy, goofy ass titles and Clean you know, all that. Well, we lost that a long time ago. Um, he's worried about like goofy ass titles and like. Stupid things, and then all of a sudden, oh, we have a team to coach. Oh crap! Yeah, we have a team to coach. It's Jeff Collins. I'll be right back, guys. I got my my dog's got something in her mouth. Okay. Yeah. 
Cassie just uh, that's what I like. She can just type it in and figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. We we got it. Take take, yeah, take we got it. some time. We got do, you. Do your thing. All right. Two and then there were two. So yes. yeah, uh, it yeah, I, I just don't understand like I just don't understand like what you do, like why you're like, okay, we have all this stuff and we need to like put it all together, but like it's like they have this giant, you know, when you get those giant like puzzles and they're like, mm. the pieces are like this big, you know, mm. and it's like 2000 pieces and you're looking at it just like, yeah, I got nothing. There's all these cool pieces here, but I got nothing. Mm. Um, but uh, this, this mug is cool, right? Like you start like drawing attention to other things mm. around you, except like to procrastinate you from the puzzle and to procrastinate you from, from everyone knowing that you don't know what the hell you're doing. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It's a hell of an analogy, and, too. And the, and this is this is all that everybody needs to know about G5 Billy, Sunbelt Billy. They decided to wear an all-black uniform with color scheme that is one of the best in the entire country. Too much. Florida, orange. Florida has some of the best uniforms in the entire country, yeah, and they decided I, I, to go all black with that. Right. Yeah, and say I, excellence on the back. Yeah, what is that? Like, yeah. why? 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 Yeah. Like, you, you're Florida. Yeah. You, like, you act like it. You, like, you, you're Florida. It's just like Luke Fickle. He wore some crap on on the back of his shirt. I'm like, dude, you're you're Wisconsin. Like, you don't need to do that. Like, you're not at Cincinnati. <laughs> you just no. It's it's stupid. Like, I I couldn't imagine. Like it, it'd be like if Kalen DeBoer comes in and like wears all black uniforms at Bama and puts like commitment on the back, you know? Like that would be stupid. Yeah. Because you because Bama doesn't need to do that. Right? Man, and, I, when Nick Saban tried to put houndstooth collars on uniform, or was that Mike's Mike Shula? That was when he tried to do that, everybody raised heck about that. If if Caleb DeBoer decided to do an all black uniform, the tiki tortures would come out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it just, it's unnecessary. Like, what, like, you don't need to mess with that. It's, you, you have Alabama has some of the most iconic uniforms in all of college football. Florida has some of the most iconic uniforms with the script gators on, on their helmet. The, the combo, like the script gator orange helmet with the blue jersey, white pants is like their most iconic look. Okay, Alabama fans, if you're watching this, listen to me right now. I'm about to be real with you, and I'm about to tell you something that you need to hear. You have some of the best uniforms in college football, without doubt, but there is a way you can add to it and add to your university brand, and that is a white helmet. Yeah, we've been wearing white helmets forever. Yeah, that is yeah. in the history. That is not mm-hmm. something that you're going around, but you can do the stormtrooper look with mm-hmm. the white helmets, and it would absolutely be iconic. Mm-hmm. And and you would get to hold all of the tradition stuff that you so much want to hold. I'm just yep. telling you, that white helmet, cool. numbers on the side, crimson. I'm, you thank me later. That would be yeah, sick. that would be sick. Would be I wish they'd do it. Or might do it. Um, he might do it. But like when Georgia wears the black jersey, just wear the black jersey. Don't make any like fuss about. It. Just wear the black jersey because mm-hmm. it's in your color scheme. Mm-hmm. It's like in your. It's like one of your primary colors. Just wear the black jersey. Don't. Just, it'd be like it's like Ole Miss like wearing powder blue mm-hmm. or navy blue. Like it, it's just wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, See, way, way back in the day, Ole Miss was the first team in the SEC. They, even before Oregon did their thing, it, Ole Miss had theirs because Ole Miss has had red and blue jerseys that they had during the same year all the way back into the 50s. That was their thing. Um, so our tradition is being non-tradition, like the powder blue jerseys and all that. It, it fits with Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Um, Georgia would have trouble doing something like, like if Georgia came out in a stormtrooper with the white helmet and white pants. Now you're speaking my language. If they did that, but the fans would riot on that one because the silver britches got taken away. The fans would also riot because the last time we tried something like that, we looked like Power Rangers and we got our ass kicked. (laughs) Man, Scott Cochran, 
uh, whenever Georgia wore the black jerseys out there for Alabama, and there somebody asked him why Alabama, um, why Georgia was wearing black, and he said they're going to a funeral, and it's like, oh my gosh, just drunk. And then they're like thirty-five nothing at halftime. Alabama, good I'm god, there. that was that was I'm iconic. I, I was sitting with recruits. I was working. I was sitting with some recruits. I was like, oh, yeah, Eesh. that 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 was amazing. Guess we're not wearing these jerseys anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked great. It it looked did. absolutely fantastic. It looked phenomenal getting our you, ass kicked in black jerseys. <laughs> yeah, I know you cannot take the result of a football game based off the look of the team that's on there. Whenever you start correlating that, Ole Miss, I actually genuinely liked Ole Miss's all gray uniforms. Does everybody remember those? Yeah, got your ass handed to you by Auburn. Yeah, we played Auburn with Cam Newton and Nick Saban's Alabama twice and played Georgia. And everybody's like, well, we don't win in those games. It's like, no shit. (laughs) Yeah. Come on. But here, so here's the thing about with the lining jerseys. up against ULM in those jerseys. Yeah. Here's the thing about the black jerseys that night. Like when we played Auburn, they, like they were genuinely surprised because black the black jerseys were never a thing. They were they were genuinely surprised. They were juiced up anyway. It was a rivalry game with with Auburn. They with, they beat the show. Hawaii didn't. We could have wore pink jerseys. It didn't matter. The Alabama game was like there was something. There was. All that sorts Alabama of like, team went undefeated. That was a good Alabama team. It was. But, like, for us to get our ass handed to us that way, there was a lot of, like, distraction that week about the jerseys, and there was a lot. Like, they made a big deal about it, and I think that took a, took a lot of – some of the focus away. Not And, and I, I, I don't know that we would have won had we not made a big deal about the jerseys, but I don't know that we get – curb stomp because that gave some fuel to Alabama's fire. Oh, also the 2020 um road uniforms with the red pants. That was a uh that was a uh a throwback to the 80 team, right? Yeah. That was a that was a 40th anniversary uh 1980 yeah. jersey or yeah. uniform. Yeah, that, that was fantastic too. But and that's just a way that Georgia could expand everything, be completely traditional, but still yeah. look Fantastic. They, they could wear those pants and be traditional. Um, yeah. they've worn white before. This is white, white's not like white's not non-traditional. They've worn white before. White pants, I should say. Well, some people could argue their silver pants is practically white anyway. Mm-hmm. They're gray, they're not even silver anymore. Like what well, who cares? <laughs> I mean it's a good look, but like they're not they're not really like silver anymore. Nike doesn't really make that material anymore. If we they had, did, they would have to go backwards in technology, which they're not doing that. Ole Miss um, spent probably 10 years getting the color gray right. Um, because for the longest time, like when Eli was there, it was silver. Um, and then after that, like 2008 was the first time the gray pants started to look right again. Yeah, because Nike Nike did the the, the silver, the, that silver look. For, for everything they didn't do and all it is, is and it's actually gray but whenever the light hits it and it just can't happen help it the light hits it that's made out of it, that reflective material so mm-hmm. it looks brighter than it actually is yeah exactly but yeah it's it you know the the last of the silver bridges the silver bridges died for georgia in 2005 mm-hmm. because they just turned into gray Non reflective purple shirts, yellow britches go to hell, you sons of bitches. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, <huh? laughs> Steve, Steve is uh rocking on in some. He listened to one of those old Miss CDs where it's like all the cheers, you know, that you study before on your way to the tailgate. Well, no, you can't do that one because LSU hadn't won purple shirts against Ole Miss since like the 80s. I got probably showed my age there. Oh, wow, yeah. The 1880s, <laughs> um, no, they like it was funny. I was, I was riding, uh, I went with uh, with Laura to uh, my first ever Clemson game, right? And I'm riding in the car, and we're going, it's Clemson versus Auburn, actually, too, which is funny. Um, going to the Clemson game, and they're listening to like which one has a lake? Uh, Clemson has the okay, lake. Clemson has a lake, yeah, like the same school, yeah. um. 
but yeah, so it was, uh, it was, yeah. So they were listening to, like I said, just listening to just regular music, like everybody else does on the way to the tailgate. They were listening to, uh, like tailgate music. They're listening to like the band. Oh, wow. They were going through like the band's greatest hits. Oh my gosh. That's tigers. And like tiger. I heard tiger rack so many times. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm it's a cool experience though, because like you get to not not that, but it, like Clemson was a cool experience. You get to leave during halftime and come back. By the way, you know, if you do that after the game, you apparently get to go on the field. Yeah, yeah. that too. Hmm? Um, Cassie, you do that, you do that yeah. in the SEC. They call the National Guard. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you get hosed literally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I forget the year when Georgia wore that silver that was playing. Boy, it was they look like Power Rangers because they had like the the. They had the silver helmet with the, like the red accent on the face mask. Like the helmet would have looked sharp had they not had the stupid like red stuff on the face mask. And the jerseys just, I don't know. Like I don't like red on red. I just don't like red on red. No. <clears throat> you, you're in danger of like Tennessee when they go all orange. The no. traffic cone. Yeah. No. I, I don't like red. On, I love black on black. Black on black is a clean look. White on white is a clean look. Red on red is not for Florida, Billy Napier. Napier. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Florida should like Florida definitely could go stormtrooper. Florida could go all blue. I'm okay with that. Oh, the, the, their blue helmets. They were, they were real close to leaning into something. So, so freaking good looking. Mm -hmm. So close. Georgia tech is really up. Speaking of, uh, stupid mm-hmm. programs. Uh, Georgia Tech's really up their uniform game. Yes. <laughs> and I, I am going to say that whenever we start bringing people into the SEC from the ACC and that conference gets blown up, Georgia Tech needs an invite. I'm, t- I'm dead serious about that. I'm, I'm going to die on that hill. All right. All right. They probably will. They probably will end up getting an invite. Um, well, uh, they, they should. Don't, don't let – um. Bobby died. Basically, make Georgia Tech pay a century later. Mm. That's Ole Miss's fault. It is Ole Miss's fault. I did a video on it. Go to Locked On Ole Miss. It's in there. Mm-hmm. Ole Miss is the Ole Miss and State is the reason Georgia Tech's not in the SEC right now. <laughs> Mamas, don't let your babies go. Mm-hmm. Oh, wrong song. Um, so yeah, uniforms, dude. Like. Mm-hmm. You got to get those right, man, in, in today's age of recruiting. Like, that's part of it. Yeah. You need to do it like South Carolina right. You want to talk about a school that's gotten uniforms right? South Carolina has gotten uniforms right. But the only thing they've gotten right. Yeah. But, yeah. Man, they look good just about in everything they put on. I love I love that they go back to, like, the uh, when they go the garnet helmet, black with garnet. Mm-hmm. That's the look that they have. Or they go all black. Those are those are pretty. And whenever they do the um, the not the anniversary, the memorial jerseys for the coach that that died. That's the black jerseys with the gamecocks across the front. He wore. Oh. He's the one that brought black to South Carolina. Okay. And yeah, um, th- those style jerseys. Those are, those are my favorite. Kentucky's is garbage. That color blue to have that terrible of uniforms, they should be ashamed of themselves. Do they have they're blue and white? And yeah, they should be better. Yeah. And they first of all, they shouldn't have stole the checkerboard from Tennessee. That's hilarious. It is it's like, what are you doing? Come on, man. That's hilarious. They look no, they honestly, they look like Buffalo. Like when if Buffalo and Kentucky played each other, I would think it's Kentucky spring game. <laughs> they look the exact – like, that's bad. Like, you that look color, like a Mac team. Yeah, that color blue is just fantastic. And 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 don't do the chrome helmets. Chrome's not in your color scheme. You're not Western Kentucky. Do the blue chrome. And now, you're, now we're talking. You get yeah, fun. or something like that. Like Washington does, Washington and Baylor do the gold, the gold chrome finish, and it's so well. Baylor, Baylor doesn't anymore. No, they basically do the matte finish now. I like the matte finish too. I like a good. Oh, 
Missouri's kind of fixing their uniforms too. Missouri's Missouri's coming strong in the uniform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When they first came into the SEC, it didn't look good at all. At all. They looked they looked very, very JV. Yeah. They need to change the font on their jersey. So did AM. AM need AM needs to, they need to drop a- 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 AM's Adidas. I mean there's yeah. they need well they need to drop Adidas and like they're they're bringing down the stock of the SEC. Is a is A and M the only Adidas school in the SEC? Mississippi State. Oh yeah, but it, it, that's basically the same thing. But, yeah, but there's two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's literally the same design. Uh, yeah, Adidas doesn't have to do anything different except for yeah. just instead of they put Mississippi State instead of A and M. Yeah. A and M needs know- to lean back into their old school, where, like they had the giant Texas A and M with the like the big like. Just like the regular maroon helmet with a giant ATM logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's hilarious that they don't lean into ATM more because yeah. that was essentially their identity. It, the ATM thing, they should just absolutely just lean into that, especially now in the NIL market. But now they're natural born predators coming into the SEC, and I yeah. can't wait for that. Me either. It's going to be hilarious. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, they've gone, like, even Texas has gone from more of, like, a a, a flatter, like, orange decal to, like, now, like, this copper-looking decal. Yeah. Like, the, they've made a little minor subtle change with their decal. It looks pretty cool. Auburn did the same thing with theirs. They have yeah. Like a copper outline. The, the Ole, orange is Ole, copper. Ole Miss has that style as well. They changed their decal as well. Yeah. Georgia's I don't like, know. How, I don't know how we got on uniforms, <laughs> other than the fact that it's almost April. I mean, it's April. It, it relates to NIL because, like, uniforms are important in recruiting. Like, let's mm-hmm. let's be honest about that. Uniforms are important, and kids that factors in. Like, whether you think it's ridiculous or not, it it's a thing. Mm-hmm. It's why they do all those photo shoots. Which now they can't do them mm-hmm. at that level. I don't. I don't know this pose. Like you know how they do. I don't know that pose. I. I. I, I don't understand or, or this. Any, this. Uh, um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. They do that too. I. I am too old. Players do that. I, I'm. I am just past playing with a hoop and a stick. <laughs> you are. I, I teach high school, and I don't know this one. I think that one, that feels dirty. It's like a dirty <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Somebody's going to clip that. Yeah. But you know what I mean. You know what yeah. I'm going. But, yeah I, yeah, I think it is. But, like, no one's ever been able to explain it. I've, I've actually – I was going to – I was probably going to regret it. I regretted my decision, and luckily I, I lucked out and didn't get, a, didn't get a solid answer. But, like, I asked some of our kids I'm like what does this mean and they just they couldn't tell me they don't know they just saw somebody that's famous doing it and then they emulated it right yeah i mean they saw all that stems from i'll see you land going <laughs> yeah i mean you know oh uh, cam did the dab and then he started sending a bunch of kids doing the dab and seating lamb uh, looks like a mannequin mm-hmm. i can see it mm-hmm. Best player, in the, best receiver in the NFL now. He's just on a trash team. Mm-hmm. Garbage. Mm-hmm. That's about to. That's about to enter the Trey Lance era. By the way, in case you're wondering. Oh, oh yes. Oh. oh. Just, just in case you're, in case we're all on the same page here. Oh man. Make sure. Yes. We're all, mm-hmm. What about what about your boy Mac Jones getting traded to the to the Jaguars? That's uh, crazy. Might be the worst spot for him to get traded to because he's never going to yeah. start. Well, I trade, you know. But trade, the flip side of that is, unless Sunshine he's home. Yeah. yeah, Trevor Lawrence gets hurt a good bit. He's he's had a couple injury issues, so. Yeah. But uh, you know, I don't think he got a fair. He got a. He don't. He didn't get a fair a fair shot. I don't think it. You know, New England was garbage. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first the first year. Yeah, the first year he had a real offense coordinator. 
his rookie season. He had pretty good rookie season. He had then a real defensive that. coordinator the second year. Right. <laughs> and then they brought in Bill Bryan. Oh, no, it's a place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then they brought in Bill Bryan. You know, there's no O in that his name because he don't mm. have no O. So Yeah. Yeah, and then, isn't he the coach of, like, Boston College now? Yeah, he just took yeah. the head coach at Boston College, Bill Bryan. <laughs> well, that was right. desperate. Jeez. Yeah. They probably win three games this year. How about Ohio State? They hire Bill Bryan and everybody's snickering and just waiting for it to happen. He ends up taking a head job and they end up with Chip Kelly. How's how blessed is that? Yeah, they dodged a major bullet there. My they, goodness. They got really lucky. Because I was I was about really? to be like, okay, Ryan Day. Sure. <laughs> Go mm-hmm. for it. Like, what are you doing? That's nuts. Yeah. Oh. If Ron Day don't win this year, then then he may be fired, and Chip Kelly may get that job. I think Chip Kelly's thinking that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, how about Vrabel? Uh, Mike Vrabel goes to the goes to Wisconsin for for a hot second, and then goes to the Browns. Mm-hmm. He's like, screw this college crap. <laughs> right. Well, they're about to change the rules in college. Yep. Wait. That- well, they're they're about to make it to where you just assign eleven recruiters, and it doesn't have to be the on field coaches. Interesting. Oh, yeah, it's going to be the scouting department, like an NFL. Yeah, office. yeah. yeah exactly, exactly. So, that. That, I've been talking about that for a lot, for a while, like about structuring, like structuring staffs like that. But but the amazing thing is for this is every coaching staff in existence the last couple of years, even longer than that. Um, has had two or three just pure recruiters on their coaching staff, right? Even though they weren't the strongest head, co- the strongest assistant coaches in the world. But those now guys, that's be recruiters. Not, yeah, now you can take guys that are essentially analysts that are really strong football people that are really strong coaches that might not be the best recruiter in the world. Put those guys on the field, and you can put your recruiters in that scouting department and let them turn them loose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a huge win. That's uh, that's mm-hmm. a that's a really good thing. That's a, uh, that's a big, especially now in this age. Whenever a high school recruiting, don't let anybody tell you that high school recruiting matters because it does not anymore currently because they can transfer four times after um they get recruited out of high school. Uh, that's got to get changed. Yeah. So the scouting departments are probably the most important departments on the football program at the moment. Mm-hmm. Same with the NFL. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's like the NFL model. I mean, we mm. we knew that was going to happen. It's it's minor. It's NFL light. Hey, the person who brought it in was like Nick Saban. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of NFL, I, I seen on X uh, a couple of people were talking about. It. I never saw any kind of like update or anything about it. But yeah, at whatever. X Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, are is the NFL getting rid of kickoffs or something? No, uh, they're going to they're going to the XFL kickoff. Okay, I got you. you know, which they... is which? There's actually going to be more kickoff returns. Okay. Um, I like it. I yeah, it just it, it just won't be what it was. It's just different. I like it. It's fun. They're they're doing away with onside kicks, probably. Okay. Which honestly, they took one of the most exciting plays in all of football, and they completely dumbed them down to they were effective about one percent of the time so yeah whatever yeah i mean it, it was dead like i i really loved that the xfl did the if you want to do an onside kick you go for like fourth and 15 yeah and if yep. you and if you got it you got to keep the ball and if you didn't that they, they got the ball wherever mm-hmm. i thought that was cool mm-hmm. that first game is in a couple of days more sturdy thing that's a yeah uh, is Matt Corral starting? I don't know. I, I should be. Yeah, I, I, be the, cor- the quarterback room for the Birmingham Stallions is freaking ridiculous. It is, it is ridiculous. Is that going to be your team now? Well, it almost has to be because me being a lifelong Tampa Bay Bandits fan, that's not an option for me. And I'm yeah. not going to root for the Memphis Showboats because <laughs> screw those guys. <laughs> Um, there is no New Orleans breakers, so I can't do the New Orleans, New Orleans thing. So it's almost Birmingham by default. Yeah, sure. I got to find a team. Uh, I I was kind of like, even though Greg Williams is a complete turd, I kind of liked D.C. a little bit. Their fans are freaking nuts, dude. 
Yeah, there's the <laughs> soccer stadium. And I think the UFL is going to figure out that if they go to these major MLS soccer stadiums and go on to those fields, they're going to be able to have more raucous crowds and it's going to look more full. It's going to look more full. Mm. It's going to feel more full because those fans are right on top of you. Like, mm. yeah. Yeah. Cause those stadiums just go straight up. They're almost like walls. Yeah. Speaking of which, speaking of soccer, 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 soccer. Um, yeah. How about that? U.S. Mexico match the other night. It's not many times I've seen a U.S. Mexico match where Mexico just is. It might as well have been Panama out there or Costa Rica, Panama, or any any lower end Concacaf team because the U.S. was so far superior to them in just about everything. Like that move that Christian Polistic made that set up the last goal is one of the sickest moves I've seen on the soccer field. And that and Tyler Adams just with that. Rocket. Just a rocket, yeah. It was a laser. The, the, keep uh, Guillermo Ochoa had no shot. Yeah, and J Jesse Marsh was in the booth at halftime, and he's like, "I used to practice that with him. I've never. He can't do that." <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, before we get out of here, we got about eight minutes to go. Let's do oh, a little MLB after dark. What's your thoughts? Right. Getting ready for the baseball season. Uh, Acuna is is uh, the best player in MLB. I don't care that bet and ass show uh, Shohei Otani and kiss my ass. Um, that's my bet. For. You want to bet? <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, my thoughts on baseball. I'm excited about the Braves. Spencer Strider's going opening day. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What about you, Jack? You excited about the Braves? It's weird that I'm all with Braves fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a – You've been with this Braves fan for a long time, Steve. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. It kind of sucks that, that their opening game got canceled until Friday, you know, Friday, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm all Friday, so I might be able to sit down and watch them. But, um, you know, the Braves got a really deep team and – you know, one of the biggest offseason uh, trades that they made was Jerry Kalinick from uh, from the Mariners. He's going to play left field, I believe, and he's kind of had up and down uh, spring. But the last couple of at bats and last couple of games, he's done really well. So maybe his bats start to come on. Um, other than that, yeah, um, I think I think the East is is the Braves to to lose. Uh, not really sold on on Washington or or the Mets. Philly's yeah. gonna be tough. The Mets. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, but yeah, I'm excited about baseball. It's uh it, it's fun to watch. I, I know a lot of people don't like it, but you know, it is it is fun to get get amped and, and watch it's, something. It's a it's a it's a great um it's a great background sport for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And Spencer Strider has got nasty stuff. He comes in with a hundred mile per hour fastball and then can throw a breaking ball that's like 80 is just incredible and he's been working on that this all season too yeah but by the end of this season jackson job will be in the major leagues 103 mm -hmm. mile an hour fastball 80 mile an hour change up yep he's good mm. he and he's going to start off at opening day at in double a mm. thoughts and prayers yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah Ooh. we wear captain sleeves here <laughs> sure not much of a dresser show this kid some control he's gonna kill somebody <laughs> steve how 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 do you think detroit's gonna fare this year you think they can get to 500 at least i, th I think fun. they can i think they mm -hmm. they have the team to where they could probably win the central mm -hmm. now they're such a young team I have doubts, but like Casey Mize, his fastball is back up to like 98 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and then they get Jack Flaherty, and all of a sudden they got his fastball up in the upper 90s. <laughs> I saw that. And, and all of the – you have like Matt Manning, who was in the rotation all of last year. He's starting out in Toledo. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're going to pitch the shit out of the baseball. <laughs> over the good they yeah. might not hit that there's they're going to go through hitting droughts but 
they're I going to pitch the ball the really well. Huh? Yeah. How did how, how, what does that do for him in the central though? Well, last year, even last year, they had a winning record against every central team. Mm -hmm. So they just need to not get boat raced by the American League East, and they'll be all right. Yeah. Tall task. Yeah, the East last year, <laughs> they were like seventeen and three or something. It, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it, they just completely owned Detroit at the beginning of the year, like at the. They opened the season last year at the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Rays just broke them for about a month. Yeah. And then by the time they got kind of right and turned it around, and by the end of the year when Scooball came back, yeah, they they were a pretty good team. Mm -hmm. Um, So we'll see. Who's all in the Central? The Twins, Guardians, Tigers? I can't um, White Sox, Royals. White Sox, Royals. Royals have not been good since they made the – you know, the World Series. Yeah. So we're White Sox are supposed White to be Sox special thing. bad. Yeah. Uh, Guardians, I don't think it's been good the last couple of years. I mean, Minnesota is about the only team that's been really good in that division. And that's almost by default. Right. So. I think Detroit I mean, can make some noise. And Detroit, let, and let's just be honest, Detroit probably has the best uniforms in all of baseball. Just no argument for me. Yeah. 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 Uh, just unbelievable. You want to talk about clean uniforms? There, that there you go. Yeah. I mean, oh, do we do do we do since we're on the uniform kick? Do we do MLB yeah. uniforms after dark? <laughs> we're we might have to do that next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're we have got the off season going on now. Right. Yeah. The the uh, I mean, I think there's more teams in MLB. I think there's. I think we'd be better suited by just talking about the teams that don't have a good look. I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. I've been I, just about every night I go to sleep to the documentary baseball, the Ken Burns documentary. And there's a video that show a black and white of the old New York giants. You want to talk about some good uniforms? Oh mm. my goodness. The, those things. I just wish I could have seen them in color because the logo was on the sleeve. Too bad. You didn't live in New York then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, both Damn, National League, goodness. both National League teams, the heart of the New York City, the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants, they had to go to California at the same time, mm -hmm. yeah. literally at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, the San Francisco Giants, they, the hat looks good. Like I like the Giants hat. Mm -hmm. The uniforms, they, they just then they work. Long over work. Yeah. The New York Giants, their logo looked real similar to what the New York Mets logo looked like. Mm -hmm. They kind of brought that over. Um, yeah. But Where that, like that the, was on the skin with the Y that loops yeah. around the two. Legs. Yeah. And, it's, it, and it looks like, you know, the Mets are, it doesn't look like the actual Mets on the jersey because they have the older style mm -hmm. New York logo. Mm -hmm. Screw the Mets, by the way, but they have some good looking uniforms. So. Yeah, they do. When they do the pinstripes with the Mets on them, those, those are pretty good luck. The um, rumor is, and I have to wait and see what happens, but the rumor is the Mets kind of ruined their black jersey. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. By, by taking out the white piping, the white stroke. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. They, the, the, the Mike Piazza uniforms? Yeah, the, I think the Yankees did that too. They took out the white stroke. On the blue, on the blue jersey? They don't wear uh, them. No, on the um gray jersey. Oh. It's gonna just be gray and navy blue, no white. Like what Boston does sometimes with their yeah. Okay. Because Boston yeah. has just the script, the the block Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that's the Bill Buckner uniforms, I call them. Mm -hmm. The Buckners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, that's lame. I'm with you, Corey. I can't stand the mess, but I loved back in the day watching Mike Piazza play. I mean, he was screw him. Really <laughs> I, I I love I love how they hated Chipper Jones. Well, yeah, I mean, he had a home run every time they played the game in, in and when Tom Chase Gladden Stadium. Mets, I know why he did, but yeah. ugh, can't I can't do that one. I loved beating the Mets. Like he, like everyone's like, oh, I hate the Yankees. I don't hate the Yankees. I don't either. That's, that's, favorite the, team. that's the New York team I hate. I don't hate the, I don't just I don't like the Yankees. I don't I don't hate them. I'm just kind of indifferent about the Yankees. 
I just kind of just roll my eyes occasionally at the Yankees because I'm like, spending more money. Boy, we leave, Steve. Better? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that he probably deserves a shot, um, but we'll find out. I don't think Kentucky hits the ball particularly well, and putting a sinker ball in on Friday, there's probably a good chance that Riley Maddox is going to win the game Friday night. Riley? Um, do you know Pat Kelsey got the Louisville job, by the way? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, the sharpshooter from College Charleston is probably heading up there. Mm-hmm. To play in the KFC Yum Center or whatever it's called. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They've come a long way from Freedom Hall. Yeah. And I know we didn't get we didn't talk basketball tonight, but I was so happy to see Auburn lose to a bunch of nerds. Oh my goodness. It was that <laughs> I love it when I call stuff correctly. Right. And and when Auburn came back and beat Ole Miss, ended up winning the game by like 20 points. I was like, Auburn's good. Mm-hmm. They're not going to go far in the tournament. Right. And they don't play like, Neville. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if the tournament was in Neville Arena, they'd they'd oh, have man. a chance to win the dang thing. Mm-hmm. But the tournament's yeah. not played there. Yeah. And it oh my goodness. The, them having a player get ejected in the first five minutes of the game mm-hmm. and then blaming on that after a full year of talking about how deep Auburn was, then all of yeah. a sudden that was an excuse that one player got ejected. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's, uh, yeah. And, 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 and Corey, real quick, it looks like Georgia's going to win the, the NIT tournament. I love really good now. Dude, trophies, man. I don't care if it's NIT. Georgia mm-hmm. hasn't had a trophy in a long time. Hey, they, wait, wait! Are they going to play Larry Blurred? Oh, oh my God, that'd be insane! That'd be that fun. would be that would be yeah. fun. I might have to watch that game. <laughs> Corey, two minutes. Nah, is it is it that time? Two minutes. Uh, two minutes. Okay, here we go. That time. <laughs> here we go. Starting right now. Uh, thank you for listening to. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. All one hundred and sixty-two <laughs> of you. Uh, deepest, deepest thank you. Uh, we are SEC After Dark again, um, presented by Dead Soxy and Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles. You can catch Jake Thomas, my, the man to uh, to my left, your right, uh, on Tide Talk Live. You can catch uh, my man Stephen Willis on Lockdown Ole Miss. He is, uh, I think he does like four shows a day, something like that. Um, and you can catch me as frequently as, as you can catch him, but I'm like doing different things. So I like, I'm like the ADHD version of okay. speak um, because I, 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 I book in the SEC. I, I do the best and the worst. Uh, believe in Georgia dogs with Israel troop and uh, occasionally solo when we can't mesh up our schedules and I need to get out of show um, and uh, locked on Vandy as well. And then during the season uh, I'll do uh, illegal motion and then we all come together, join forces here every Wednesday night uh, for SEC After Dark. So um, be a friend, tell a friend, spread the word, um, like us, subscribe to us on YouTube, find us all on social media uh, at Jake Thomas TTS, at Coach Burton 36, at the Stephen Willis. And uh, you can find us anywhere you get your uh, podcast, uh, most notably YouTube, um, and, and catch us. And, and Jeb uh, is just a dude. Jeb is just a dude. Mm-hmm. We're waiting on episode number one for him. They're not mm-hmm. going to start talking about his podcast, but it's not eventually there. it's going to happen. Eventually. Eventually. Just like eventually I'm going to sign off. So mm-hmm. uh, we are SEC After Dark presented by Dead Sox and Stewart's Cage Deal Pickles and BetOnline.ag. We thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your week and weekend. We'll see you back here next week. Uh, we'll talk some Sweet 16, probably some more uniforms and whatever else is on our mind. Peace. Go, dogs. Anchor down. Hotty toddy. Roll Tide.